Um, on the Very Holy good. Spirit, yes. Isaiah 63 is an interesting one where spirit obviously is synonymous with Yahweh, God himself. Yeah, of course. It's so we spirit. read verse 9, in all their affliction, he was afflicted, yeah. God. And then look at verse 10. Yes. They rebelled and grieved him. His, his, Holy, his spirit. Holy Spirit. Him. Yeah. If you grieve God, you're grieving the spirit of God, of course. Yeah, it's God himself. So that's a good... Um, God himself in spirit. Jesus said, I'm going away, but I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm coming back to you. And he did in spirit. And therefore, he is also the comforter in, as you've mentioned often, 1 John 2, 1. Jesus himself is the comforter. That doesn't mean there are two comforters. It's not so hard. Jesus said, I repeat this for clarity. I'm leaving you, but I don't want to leave you as orphans. What's going to happen? I'm going to come back to you in spirit very personal. You see, the non-Trinitarian people made the mistake of saying that the Spirit is strictly non-personal. If by that they meant the Spirit is not a third person, they were absolutely right. Not a third person, but it's not impersonal. It's not a sort of dead non-personal thing. It's God in action, not a third person, because the Spirit never is worshipped, never prayed to, you never pray to the Spirit, and the Spirit never sends any greetings. This is not so hard, but don't say it's impersonal because it's coming from the very person of God or Jesus. It wouldn't matter which, the effect is the same, I think.